now in our top 10 moments, and for this one we go back slightly to the summer of 2008, where we did our first ever collaboration with another video maker, uh, which saw the filming and making of Railway Volunteer Diaries. This also gained a special place in Pulse TV's short history as being our first special show, as we went all the way to North Wales to make it. Uh, this show was actually not originally our idea, it was put onto us by a good friend of me and Ashley's called uh, Max Brain. Uh, after he'd seen our earlier work and our first load of work uh, on SVR 4 and Rise, Rise and Fall, get yeah, you right. Um, <laughs> so, went to North Wales and filmed it, um, and it was the first time I'd been away from home to film um, one of our shows, and again, that was one of the reasons which made it so special and why it's got into my top 10 moments. Uh, it also showed what Pulse TV could do, because um, our um, cooperation with Max uh, allowed us to make one show that was easily, at the time, our best so far, and it was also for a while our only show on YouTube, until we moved to YouTube the following year. Again, this helped advertise with Pulse TV, and um, it also helped us with our technical skill because Max had been doing video making for a while, we were fairly new to the whole thing. So he made, he um, gave us certain expertise that made our shows better as time went on. Max, of course, also gave us our theme tune. It was the first time that um, Bonsi V had had a theme tune in that show, and actually he put it in there himself. Uh, we didn't ask for it, and we didn't come up with it. He put it in there himself, and we asked Max afterwards whether or not we could use it as like a theme tune for the rest of our shows, and he said yes, thankfully. Thank you, Max. Um, so that gave us our theme tune, which is another important step in Pulse TV's short history. Now from moment number four we move quite a bit further forward in time from moment number five, so we move from the summer of 2008 to the January of 2011, when we launched, or rather I launched, the Matthew Hall Show. Now this is something that I wanted to be doing, wanted to do for a while, because through studying media studies and wanted to do television and film production at university, I felt I needed to do a bit more of a professional show format for, uh, just to try it out. And actually, the six months from January to May and June 2011 gave me a good time to launch this idea. It was going to be a monthly show, which has mostly happened apart from there being no show in April and the May show being a bit late, but no matter. Um, and uh, as I say, I thought it was a good opportunity, and I'm generally quite pleased with how it's all gone. Um, I designed the show so it could be entertaining and also engaging for Pulse TV's audiences. And as I say, I'm quite pleased how it's gone. It's got good viewings, it's got good reviews, and it's got good support. Um, I think the shows have slightly got better as I went through those six months, uh, as I got more used to doing them. Um, and perhaps my comedy hasn't been brilliant at times, but uh, as I say, it's had uh, good viewings, and I'm generally quite pleased how it's gone. Um, and I might one day even revisit the format uh, another time, but uh, we'll come, that, come to that a bit later on in the show. Right, now for moment number three, we go way back to the beginning, to the first day of the filming of our first show, Seven Valley Railway, Fall and Rise, part one. We turned up at Kidderminster Station, all together, we have a few briefing plans in mind, and we filmed the first scene, and this was the start of Pulse TV as we know it now. Pulse TV was actually not brand new back then, uh, Matthew Davis, who was the person who originally created Pulse TV, had done one show the previous November, um, and we thought, we needed, well he didn't have enough time to keep producing them being a year 13 student as I am now, um, so we said, me and Ashley said we'd take over and have a go at making a few videos ourselves. We were actually quite unprofessional back then, we only had a basic uh, camera, we didn't have a tripod, and we didn't really um, present it in a very professional manner like we do now. I like to think that our presenting techniques have got better as time went on, so I think they have. Um, and also it was a really, really cold day. Um, not the best stars, I suppose, to TV's uh, um, immediate future. Um, but, hey, it started all from there, and we've not really looked back. 
Uh, we've kept getting better, I think, uh, and this is why it's such a significant moment, because it was the start of it, and actually the show was such a big hit that we thought, that we knew and thought we could keep going. Um, it received several hundred views on its first night, and of course, officially, I suppose, the foot launch night of the new Pops TV, and we did really well, and I'm really pleased with how it went. And um, I remember about then, we didn't really know what to do with the show once we made it, because we didn't really have anywhere to put it on the internet, but eventually we came up with Google Video. Um, and then, of course, as I mentioned earlier on in the show, we moved to YouTube a year later. That was the start of it all, and that's why it's made it into my top ten moments. Um, and look at where we are now. We've got tripod, camera, and for the first time ever, this show's going to be broadcast in full HD, which is 1080. Right, we're getting to the two most important ones. And in at number two is our collaboration with our then sister group, the Mad People's Association, to produce the Mock of the Week show, which to this day is still our most popular show to date. Um, it was the first time we partnered with our uh, sister group. Um, unfortunately our sister group does not actually exist anymore for, due to uh, a lot of problems concerning the people involved with it, but uh, this show definitely showed what the two organisations could do. Um, it was originally actually going to be two separate shows, the Mad People's Association doing their own version and Pulse TV doing another one, but when plans were both sort of fell apart, we decided, well, we'll have a proper competitive show where we have the MPA versus Pulse TV. And unfortunately, the MPA did win. Um, but it really did show what Pulse TV could do. And this show proved massive with people. Um, really shot up, got over 400 views on its first night, which is still a personal record for Pulse TV to this day. Um, and again, to whole new people, a whole new, all, all sorts of new people started watching Pulse TV. So it really was beneficial, and it acted actually as a great advert for the Mad People's oh, Association, yes. as they were quite is new back the then. amount of people, and it got in people viewing their the stuff as well. Watch so it, <laughs> <laughs> it was very memorable. Uh, coming up with it and then filming it was a great day. Uh, we had lots of fun doing it, um, and for all these reasons, it's made it at number two. But it's taken something very special to make it to number one. So let's have a look and see. What my number one moment during my time on Pulse TV is. Right, so, in at number one, my most memorable and best moment working for Pulse TV over the last few years is the making of our Christmas special for 2010, Rise of the Balaclava Bandit, which, in my opinion, was the biggest and most challenging production we've ever made as it involved the most people and it showcased, every, showcased everything that we have achieved over the last few years as far as I was concerned. You know, it had the most people involved, the busiest film schedule, most challenging film schedule and an awful lot of time was spent writing, making and editing it. It actually took 10 months to make which is still the longest we've ever spent on a Pulse TV show. Uh, it took a few months to write and then Quite a few weeks to film, although actually the filming actually only went on in a few days. We filmed it mostly within three days, but it took an awful lot of planning. Um, and other bits and pieces were filmed over the course of several months, such as um, the bits in part three, where we had various people talking to us over webcam in the show. Uh, those were filmed um, across several months, as I said. Um, and we really are thankful to all the people who were involved. As I say, I think it showcased everything that Pulse TV has achieved since we started, it seems to me and Ashley started anyway, um, and we're very pleased to where we got to with that show. The show also, and this is another reason why it's made my top 10, is because it actually marked the end of the current Pulse TV regime with the departure of Ashley Dunn, as me and Ashley have worked on an awful lot of Pulse TV shows over the last few years. Uh, it turned out to be his last show as he was no longer um, a sixth former at the school, he uh, had left a few months earlier and we wanted to give him a proper farewell in December. So the show was partly to say thank you to him and to mark all his achievements uh, and all the achievements that me and him have uh, achieved yeah. <laughs> achieved on Pulse TV. I remember most uh, memorably the last scene we filmed which was the scene uh, near the end of part 4 where Ashley 
uh, shoots the climate change machine to save the world and dies in a massive explosion. Um, well, I remember me and him saying after that scene, you know, look where we've come after all these years, and we come to this, the biggest, the end of the biggest production we've done together, and we probably won't do another one like this together. So it was sort of sad and emotional moment. Um, talking of the filming itself, filming was an absolutely massive task. Um, at least thirty different locations, um, and I remember. Some of the most difficult bits to film were, was the car chase sequence. Um, we've never done anything like that before. Uh, we've done crashes before, of course, um, but you know those are fairly easy to stage. But doing a whole car chase was quite difficult, especially with guns and speed and everything involved. Um, I think we did quite well with it, uh, actually. Uh, another difficult bit, another memorable moment, definitely, was the uh, filming of the scene, the wasteland sequences, um, in parts two and three and at the end of part one also. Um, as we tried to try and find locations uh, which didn't have much evidence in the modern world uh, around them and this was, uh, was quite difficult but we did it and I was quite pleased with the overall result. And um, I was perfectly honest, um, I didn't think we'd ever pull that show off. It was such a massive thing um, and there were problems and we did have to redo a few rewrites and a few quick rethinks during it but Overall, it really was something that I'm very proud of, and I hope the people that were involved with it were also proud of. Um, might as well never do anything like it again. So, um, yeah, we've reached my number one moment. Well, I suppose this is it. The end of my time on Pulse TV. Unlike Ashidan, I'm not having a heroic ending. Um, where I die in a massive explosion, but perhaps die, the dying bit is a good thing. Um, I must stress that this isn't actually the end of Pulse TV. There are new people waiting to take over from me who are younger and much more energetic. Uh, not that I'm a pensioner or anything, but they've got fresh new ideas and I'm looking forward to seeing what they come up with. Um, people who are actually taking over from me are LSC members Melvin Sower, Megan Arnold and uh, Dan Davis. Um, and they will all have different responsibilities in managing how Pulse TV is currently run. So Pulse TV will actually look the same, it will start a Facebook group, a YouTube channel and a website. I believe that they will do a very good job and Dan himself has already done some sterling work relaunching Pulse Australia in the last few months. Uh, if you haven't seen any of these they are on our website and they are also on his YouTube channel uh, and here is a link to it now. This is also by no means the end of my video and filmmaking work, as I'll be setting up a new YouTube channel fairly soon uh, for myself in the near future, and I'll probably get the link somehow onto Pulse TV's uh, YouTube channel, uh, so keep your eye out if you're really interested in following me, my work still. Um, I'm not actually sure what kind of stuff I'll be making yet, um, I'm going to have a few months break uh, during the summer, and then we'll see where it goes from there. It could depend an awful lot on what happens to me in the next few months, whether I'm going to university. Uh, and uh, so on. So for the last time, goodbye and thank you to all our viewers. I'm now off to a fancy dress party. So goodbye and good luck to you all and the last few years have been a blast. Goodbye. Aha, my heart is. Evil historian, you must die. <laughs> My entire job I cast you to hell. <laughs> <laughs>